we have the Bishop's first appearance in this Uncanny X-Men issue 282. 1991 November. 1991. This is a volume one of Uncanny. So 200 issues in, 280 issues in. It's pretty, pretty steep. Um, we start off with the Professor Xavier School for the Gifted. A pleasant sor sorbic, which is like uh, not a correct word, which hides the dark truth. Yeah. So the title is actually School for the Gifted Hides the Truth. That's this weird French word. It is very French, no? And we start off with Xavier and Forge playing chess and they're laughing and giggling and then all of a sudden wait what the x-men the x-men are here and the x-men bust through with this sentinel head a trophy a battle trophy forge but at much cost because we have jean gray here unconscious jean storm what happened to jean we were attacked by a small band of sentinels at the Hellfire Club earlier this evening. What were they doing at the Hellfire Club is what I want to know. I need to go back and get the last issue so I can see the last issue and the issue right after this. So we can kind of see like actual origins of the event and a little bit more origins of the Bishop thing. Uh, there was another mutant involved. A stranger, but he seemed to be, like, not part of the Pierce thing. Pierce is the guy that they were fighting with the Sentinels. And in the end, we prevailed against the Sentinels. And the stranger fled, taking the Hellfire Club's queen with him. Wait, so the stranger was the bad guy. Uh, not quite what we saw in the last issue, but... Gene was felled by the last wave of sentinel assault, and there's no trace of her brain activity. She, she can't be dead. I'm physically attuned to all of you X-Men's. I would have known. I would have felt her death. I must probe further if there's any chance a trace of Gene. Oh, yes, she is not dead. Her psyche survives, but it is... It, this place far in a distant land and so this guy's name is Fitzroy who's the Pierce guy because they're talking about Pierce and this guy his name is Shinobi Shinobi so there's the white queen Emma Frost who was captured by Fitzroy and his gang of sentinels and they come to this man's house, um, basically demanding some kind of ring he's wearing. All right. So who is Shinobi and what is this ring he carries? Right? That's kind of my question that they don't tell me. It's not quite easy, Trevor. Trevor Fitzroy, I never quite agreed to your version of this game. And if you want the ring... You will have to take it from me. Which I can do, Shinobi. Oh, too easily. My Sentinels defeated the X-Men tonight. Do you really think you have a chance against them? And then you hear him. Aye! So it seems as if this Fitzroy character did take the ring from Shinobi. That we don't know what power it holds. And the X-Men have the... Uh, sentinel brain inside a big computer and they're like downloading all of the data they can out of it kind of forming the data from him trying to locate or figure out what had happened um we still don't know the approximate location but it won't oh wait we we know the approximate location but it won't be easy to pinpoint um you may need to accompany us for this mission you may you, oh, you mean indeed. He's saying he's going to go. He's going no matter what. And then Professor Xavier is like, I'm going too, sucker. You need my cerebro mind. Uh, um, where is it? I thought Iceman says like, are you sure? Oh, yeah, right here. You really think that's a good idea? 
No, I don't, Iceman. I don't think it's a good idea, but Jean Grey needs us. And I need to be there to help you find her. And then we're back into this Fitzroy character. These aren't Sentinels anymore. What are these? These are cool looking. And then this little creature is his manservant. And so his power is he steals. Like he, he's going to, not this guy in particular, but say, say this guy. He like touches him, steals his life force, and he's able to create portals to teleport himself or others through based on how much life force he has taken and that would seem to be his only power as of yet. So he does it. These guys are coming through. They somewhat fuse together. It appears that... Wait, what does it say? That Oh, fused. As always, fused into a single mass by trans transition. Not dead yet, but still useful. And you see them fused together. Um... What's his name? This little, this little imp man. Master Fitzroy, I'll do my best. Oh, Batam. His name is Batam, this little thing. And uh, Master Fitzroy is getting very, very angry that Batam didn't know or feel or alert, alert anyone that this portal was still active and open. And he's yelling at him quite severely. Which is probably not the best because he's thinking to himself, Fool, you'd make my life easier if you would be more frugal in your use of power. One day you may open the portal, one of your time portals, and the devil knows what will come out of it. And then we have the uh, black, it's called a blackbird? Yeah, the blackbird soaring across. We have... Oh, look at Cerebro. Looks crazy. I guess it's like a portable version of Cerebro. Definitely looks sick. To save her from the attack, Jean transferred her psyche into the mind, the nearest mind, which should happen to be Emma Frost, the White King of the Hellfire Club. Queen of the Hellfire Club. Not a place Jean would ever think she'd be. Yeah. Looks like it could be tough in there. And then this is what I was talking about. Him sucking the power out of people. You're killing me, Tara. No, Tara. At least, not yet. The essence of your life will continue to exist as part of me. So, that's the neighbor dog. It literally lives outside all the time. Kind of just kind of grin and bear it, you know what I mean? Until I use the energy to open yet another one of my temporal passages. Then your small life... Coupled with the lives of the two unfortunates I absorbed earlier, will prove provide the rate of exchange necessary to allow three others to pass through from another time, which is these three. Um, they, he does say his name. Pleasant is not the word. Fitzroy. Mm, lucky. Oh, you're lucky. Oh. Burke, Kroger, and there's one other. This one's Burke. This one's Kroger. Kroger. I don't, those guys don't sound familiar. And some, some kind of agreement was made, a pact you three entered into in exchange for your arrangement of your release. Oh, I think I see a better way. I'm free now. Master of my own destiny. No one can stand in my way. No one can stop me. Least of all, you, Fitzroy. Try and stop me. Oh, sure. Why don't you just step right back through the portal? You're free to go, buddy. And he does. But it's a one-way puzzle. A uh, puzzle. It's a one-way portal. Any attempt to pass through. Um, and they extract the necessary energy from the most immediate source. So that guy just got <laughs> destroyed. Oh, Styles is the other guy. Burke, Styles, and Kroger is the one who just got disapparated through the portal. Uh, excuse me, time to refresh myself. So creating that portal right there, even though, oh yeah, creating this portal 
drains his energy. So he's going to try to like get some more power, I guess from Emma Frost, I wasn't sure. But Emma Frost is actually, Jean Grey is using Emma Frost's body. And where is Emma Frost's mind is the question. Is it trapped in Jean Grey's body? How does it work? Because they have Jean Grey's body in the Blackbird in cryostasis. And Jean Grey's mind is inside Emma Frost controlling it because they're even like, levitation? No, you can't do that. You're nothing more than a telepath. She's got some kind of te telekinetic powers. And so, yeah, even those, they even say, well, we'll find out what happens on the biopsy table. Like, they're going to cut her up. Kill her, Jean Grey. Her mind is active again. So Professor like feels it immediately. And he's able to get a location on what's happening, where to, where to go, where to fly in and land. And they jump out. It's very, very cold outside. Only Storm and Iceman can manage. These guys, they're like freezing their butts off right there. That's what that white stuff is. They're getting frozen couple of weird I don't know why those pages are like glossy and then these pages are not anyways then pull back to the battle perimeter and according to the instruments on the blackboard the layer is heavily shielded only to unleash a furious storm to breach the defensive shell Colossus be ready on my signal at that moment inside the hit and at that moment inside the hidden base not quite good enough gentlemen your weapons aren't effective as long as my telekinetic power can deflect their fire. The only question is, how much longer can I keep this up? This is diffi difficult, ridiculous. Emma Frost's powers are nothing like this. What was that? A tremor? Oh, they feel like the uh, thunderous rage going on outside because an unauthorized aircraft was detected. Oh, earlier I didn't mention that someone did detect the aircraft and he was like nah it's probably not a big deal we could still have lunch first and they're like well I, I guess but it has mutants they're attacking the thing bro i want to call this number there's another phone number in here actually two others i just want to do like a stream where i try and call every number maybe even like there, there's some also that just have an address. Maybe even send off a few letters. This one says, like, you have to pay per minute. Maximum four minutes. Um, you answer questions, trivia questions, to win prizes. You can win plated sign X-Men covers of your choice. I want some. Where do you find these kind of things at? Oh, here's the actual address. Should I write them to? I'm gonna exhaust every option <laughs> to try and, whoa, Marvel Girl, what's up? All right, and not to mention any, and not to, not a moment too soon. Colossus and the Eternal X-Men are here. Oh, that that's, um, what's his name? Oh, that's Fitzroy saying that, but this is Jean Grey, I got you, Archangel. Warren? Yeah, then you know what happened. Oh yeah, we know what happened. Professor, professor was able to deduce the circumstances. We have put your real body safely in cryogenic storage on the Blackbird. The, that was what I was talking about. Now all we have to do is mop up these losers. It's not possible. They're blasting through us like we're amateurs. I've selected the finest mercenaries in the world for my personal shirt ca ca cadre. Cadre, is that my French? Why is this happening? Mm, sir, the Sentinels did try and warn you about the aircraft. How dare you lecture me? Silence! Load the queen. Queen is loaded. Mm. And the Sentinels have arrived. Destroy them. Destroy the X-Men. Well, that's my cue to leave. So that Forge is the one who's driving this little craft. And he leaves pretty quickly, leaving the X-Men to fight for himself. Because Forge has no powers, like, honestly, except for his mind is beyond smart. He's like a computer 
in his mind and the creator of, of what is it called forge smith electronic it says it in the first page something smith mm, i can't read it fast enough he's like a something oh right here his opponent, the machine smith, known only as Forge. So he's like not really have, he doesn't really have powers other than his mind power. All right, get her back. Get her back to the ship, Forge. We will deal with the Sentinels. Now, X-Men, as we plan, smash them and freeze, freeze them before they can repair themselves. All right, we got this. The Sentinels, they're failing. The most advanced Sentinels ever created, and the X-Men are destroying them. Oh, no! Um, okay, so he, he gets mad. He takes some more of his, like, victims that were... See, they're, like, trapped in these things. And he's bringing back up the X-Men. Waste their own limited energies. I shall unleash mine in the creation of a temporal portal greater than any I've ever p created before. Come forth, you denizens of the future. Remember your sworn oath. You are my army, my warriors. And against the against you, the X-Men have no hope of survival. So like a whole horde of people, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, no, ten. Ten villains pop out of this portal at once, which he said that was the most he'd ever done. I think it's only two or three would be a normal, but how many, I wonder how many lives he took for to make that. Did he take all four of those people's lives to create that? And the X-Men still not having that much trouble fighting these guys, as you can see. Looks like we won't be too much strain. Shiny, but they look tough but they have no defense against my ice. Perhaps not, but I think you will discover the night is full of surprises. What? The portal? No! What does this mean? So, grab him. You can see the gun. There's another gun. You can't really tell. This image is weird and it's grainy. I want young Fitzroy alive. No! No, it can't be! Yes, it can, Bishop! But it is, Fitzroy. And in this case, in case it slipped your attention, the little games you got yourself into got a whole lot deadlier. The answer is next. Bishop. First appearance. The man. The myth. The legend. Bishop. So that was basically it. There's nothing else. I really want to get the issue previous to this and the issue right after to kind of bring the story full circle. But Uncanny X-Men, the first appearance of Bishop. Yeah, that's, but that's what that is. And I saw it today. It was a, a new comic that they bought and it hadn't even put on the wall or pretty much... It was just in a stack in the corner. Let me go through those real quick, baby. Nothing will ever be the same. Alrighty, folks. Have a good one. Peace.